Hello, welcome to Beach View, our podcast where we talk about all sorts of things and stuff. Yep, and we're doing more music. It's another mixtape. This time the theme is alternate versions, so any sort of like covers or remixes or like songs that heavily sample another song, you know, stuff like that. Remix. I always <laughs> think that when I hear that word. Or what remix is this? Which I don't remember what that's from. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So we each picked five songs, and we're gonna go through them. Excellent. Okay. Do you want to get us started? Okay. Well, uh, mine's probably the wrong song to start with. <laughs> <laughs> you should put it at the end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's "Numb Slash Encore" by Jay Z and Linkin Park. You know, uh, funny to put a song called Encore as the start, but, uh, (laughs) so this is from the 2004 EP Collision Course, which was like a mashup of several Jay-Z and Linkin Park songs. The original versions are Numb from Linkin Park's 2003 album Meteora, and Encore from Jay-Z's 2003 album The Black Album. This song was a single, which I didn't know until looking it up, and it actually charted on the Billboard Top 40. Yes. Yeah, I remember this song, uh, like, being played on the radio, and, uh, yeah, I I didn't know that they did a whole album, though, together. Oh, really? Huh. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't, like, familiar with the original Jay-Z song, but, you know, I'm familiar with this one, and obviously very familiar with the original Linkin Park song. Mm-hmm. And I, I like this one a lot better than the original Linkin Park song. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was familiar with both songs, Numb and Encore. You know, love Jay-Z, love Linkin Park, love them even more together. And this, <laughs> um, like, I guess you, like, mash up, I don't know what you call it. It's really, like, a remix, I guess. Yeah, well, something like that. Like, yeah. Both of those, yeah. Right. Um, I think they're great together. I love both of their sounds, you know, intertwining with the other. I think it's a great single. Um, and it definitely, like I said, I remember it, you know, being popular back then. So, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, I think both of these, uh, well, all three, I'll say all three, because you had none of encore (laughs) and then you had no encore. I think they're all great. This is such a quotable song, too. This is one of the songs... I know you hear me say this a lot, but, like, that I still think of, like, now, just every once in a while, it'll pop in my head, you know? Um, And it's always this version of the songs that I, um, that I think of, so definitely long-lasting for me. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I just love, I really love their sounds together, and I knew they had other songs together. I don't know why I did not know they had a whole album together. Well, it's an EP. I think it's only, like, five or so. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I like this version better than the original Linkin Park, just because um, I think the, like, Jay-Z's really good over it, mm-hmm. and I like the rhythm and the harmony, which isn't in the original. I think that really adds to the uh, sound. There's a different yeah. uh, rhythmic pattern, so I like that a lot. Absolutely. This collaboration all the way around, um, lyrically, you know, the sounds, like you said, the rhythm, I think it all, all the way around is like, enhances the original yes yeah so uh next song okay this song um creepin by metro boomin 21 savage and the weekend have you heard this before no i have not okay so this has been um i've been hearing it way more lately it's from metro boomin's heroes and villains album 2022 it samples uh the original Mario um, went in saw, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I just call him Mario because that's what I knew him as, from 2004, um, I Don't Want to Know. And in this version, Travis Scott provides background vocals. Um, the Weeknd and Mario had previously collaborated. And if you've seen the video for this, you know I'm all about the videos. <laughs> you'll see um, cameos by Mario. Wow, okay. And I think there's... Um, I forget who else. Um, But anyway, this is a standout track on the album from what I read. I did not listen to the whole album. (laughs) But I really like this song because um, I still sing I Don't Want to Know by Mario. Like, that is 
I'll listen to that every once in a while. It just, it's, that's another one of those songs that has stayed in my head since back in the day. You know, love Mario, but I love the new sound that like this Creepin version has. Um, and funny enough, Creepin, the name has been, there's been a ton of songs with that name over the years, like from way back. There's been like several versions of Creepin. So I thought that was also interesting. But this is, I guess, a remake of I Don't Want to Know by Mario. Yeah, I didn't know the original song. I had to look it up. So Yeah, what did you think? Uh, the same thing. <laughs> I always think when you bring a song from this genre. You know, it's a <laughs> modern R&B track. It's fine, but I think it's, it's boring. It's not my uh, thing. I like it. I actually, it came on today. <laughs> And um and this song came on and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, anyway, so I definitely this is going on my playlist. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it's a winner. And I like I like all well, I don't I'm not familiar with Metro Boomin, but I like the weekend, I like Twenty One Savage and All Together. And I love that they did the cameo with Mario in the video. He's the OG, so Yep, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> Don't like this genre, so. <laughs> oh, well. I tried. Yep. Well, next. Yeah, next. All right. Hand Crushed by a Mallet remixed by 100 Gex featuring Fallout Boy, Craig Owens, and Nicole Dollenganger. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is from the 2020 remix album 1000 Gex and the Tree of Clues. The original version is from the 2019 album 1000 Gex. Uh, so more of 100 Gex <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> uh yeah and that uh album's a whole remix album of their first album so that's cool yeah what'd you think of this one um i like it i thought it was pretty good it gets a little aggressive toward the end of the song yes, which yes. um i thought was kind of funny because my cat was next to me when i was listening <laughs> and he was not a fan of the end of the no, song like his no. his little ears went back and he was like what is this but I thought it was overall, it was a good um, version. So I liked it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think this is by far the best remix on that remix album. I think turning this song in particular into a rock song really works. Did you go back and listen to the original or no? I listened to, like, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I listened to part of it. Oh, okay, yeah. It's Just to kind of get a feel genre. for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, and the first time I heard this, I was like, is that Fallout Boy? And then yes. I looked it up, and it was Fallout Boy. Uh, and it was um, like, yeah, I think the opening bass is really incredible. And um, you know, when I first heard this, I was like, "Damn, Patrick Stump still got it." <laughs> 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 I think he does a really good job vocally, uh, and I like the ending with the like screaming. Yeah, yeah, it definitely like brings it in at the end. And I agree, like, as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh, Fallout Boy. Like, you, it's very recognizable Yeah, that it's them. And um, I thought this was, you know, it's pretty good all together. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. So, more 100 Gex. Yeah, I love how you keep bringing in 100 Gex, because that's not, like, a band I would normally, like, listen to or that I, that I hear often. And no. so I was like, oh, let's see what this is, you know? I also keep bringing in Lincoln Park. Yes. I mean, you know Lincoln Park. So of That's course. like the third time we've done Lincoln Park on this podcast. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Next. Okay, so my next song is Smooth Criminal by Alien Ant Farm. A classic. Have you heard this before? Yes, of course okay. I've heard this one before. <laughs> you never know. Like, I'm just checking. Yeah. So, fun fact, I saw them perform this song Way back in the early 2000s, it might have even been like the year 2000, I don't even remember. No, it had to be like maybe 2001-ish, but I saw them at the Vans Warped Tour, oh, um, which okay. was in New Orleans, and um, I remember I skipped out on work. I mean, I did, you know, ask my boss if I could skip out <laughs> on work, because I wanted to go to the Vans Warped Tour and somebody gave me last minute tickets. So I was all about it, and I thought it was really fun to see Alien Ant Farm there, and they performed this song, and it was really good. This is from their 1999 album. I, be I believe it was titled Greatest Hits, which I thought was kind of funny, of course. Yeah, but, um, 
Yeah, but I like this song. So the original is um, Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson. Yes, yeah. Very popular song. Very popular, which was released um, in November 1988 as the seventh single from his seventh album, Ooh, Bad. Seven in, singles. Yes, in 1987. So I feel like I already knew that, but like. Yes. From the, I know, seven singles. That's crazy. That's like almost the whole album (laughs) yes and so honestly i'm gonna say like no offense to mj but i like the alien ant farm version better yeah yeah i mean this is like one of the covers that appears on like lists of the best covers yes yeah like the i think the uh 2000s like rock new metal sound works really well for this song in particular yes i agree the bass in the original fits really well with the uh, the style. You know, really well done here. And, you know, this guitar riff's really good. Yes. I think it's, like, the perfect remake of this song. I just think, I don't know, it's just a fun song to me, even though it's, like, I, I guess just, like, the the pace of it, you know, like, it's fun to me. Like, it's yeah. just, like, high energy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think that's a, it is definitely a good one. And when we first um said, Hey, we're gonna do this compilation of like remakes or remixes, um, or alternate versions, I, like this immediately came to mind. So there Yeah, you go. yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So all together good. All right, what's your next song? All right. Uh next Can't Take My Eyes Off You by Muse, which is a B side from the two thousand two single Dead Star slash In Your World. Uh, and the original version is uh, from Frankie Valli's 1967 album, The Four Seasons Present Frankie Valli Solo. You know, this is a very famous song. Mm-hmm. Like, classic, even. Yes. Absolutely. This is kind of like, it starts out as like, you know, just kind of like a normalish cover. It's like the um, uses an alt-rock band, so it's like a 2000s alt-rock cover of this. And then it gets kind of goofy to me. <laughs> Like, in the pre-chorus, it gets really fast and yelly. Yes. <laughs> which uh, is part of why I like this song. It's kind of a goofy cover, but, you know, I, I like the 2000s alt-rock sound. So. Same, and I um I definitely think this is way better than the other version, than the um, Frankie Valli version. Oh, really? Okay. In my opinion, yes. Um, I like, like, how they rock out in this song, like, in this yeah, version yeah. of it. Like, it's just, like, rock out. Um, anytime I see the song or hear the song, I always think of, um, that movie, 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, is it in that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the song that Heath Ledger sings. I could be thinking of this the wrong way, but I would have to go back and look at that. But I'm pretty sure that's the song that Heath Ledger sings. So I always think of that. And it's like one of those, like, oh, that's cute. I need to go rewatch that movie. Yeah, yeah. So kind of an interesting cover. It is. Yeah, I like it. I think it works. Me too. For sure. All right. Well, yeah. (laughs) Not much to say about that one. So next. (laughs) So you know what my next song is. It's I-L-Y, I Love You Baby, by Surf Mesa, featuring Emily. This is another version of Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. Um, And this one was released in 2020. And I have to say, when this first came out i i heard it and i was like oh i'm tired of i love you baby song you know like i don't (laughs) don't really want to hear it but i kept hearing it again and again and again and i was like you know what i actually like it i really do and which for me a lot of times the first time i hear a song i'm like i don't know and then once i hear it like several times i'm like no i really actually like it so i really like this version i think i like it better than the the muse version Oh, okay. What do you think? Yeah, once again, I don't like this genre. Yeah. <laughs> Which genre would you say this is, though? This is kind of like a, I don't know, like kind of R&B-ish, but not exactly. Uh, it's yeah, kind of I pop, mean... I guess, is the best. Yeah, I think it's, it's more like, like pop. Just 2020s yeah. pop. That like low tempo, uh, yes. like heavy production focused sort of deal. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't say R and B, but yeah, it's I got some R and B influences, but no, it's not yeah, R and B proper. I could, see, I could see that though. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. But and as I was doing some research, of course, I 
you know, saw the Frankie Valley version. Um, you know, Frank Sinatra also apparently sang it. Oh, okay. But yeah, I um, I'm gonna have to say like mm, I like my remake better than your remake. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I like 2000s alt rock and don't like uh 2020s pop. So got you. <laughs> I will say I do think the like instrumentation and production is better in this than like usual like stuff from this genre but yeah you know still not my thing i got you i got you <laughs> this is more chill low-key i'm sure that's why you yes like it better. that's why i like it yeah <laughs> i'm glad that's caught on by the way chill low-key <laughs> i mean it's caught on with me exactly <laughs> yeah with one person yeah whatever all right well next next so uh Losing My Religion, Major Key by R.E.M. So this is an alternate version posted to YouTube in 2013. I don't know if that's like where it's originally from or not. The original version is from R.E.M.'s 1991 album, Out of Time. Yeah, it's a popular 90s song. Um, and this is a version of the song transposed from a minor key, which is the original, to a major key. Uh, and there's like several of these you can find online. People started doing them like several years back and you'll still see them occasionally and i think they're neat so what'd you think of this one in particular i like it it's funny because um i don't really know what that means when you say like a minor a major key <laughs> versus a minor key that sounds really silly um but i don't know what that means i'll be completely honest with you but as i was listening to it what I know is that it sounds different, so... Yes, yes. <laughs> I caught that it sounds different, but I didn't know what that means, so can you explain that? Okay, so, like, basically three notes are different consistently. So, uh, do you know what a key is? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, major and minor are different um, modes, are the two main modes in, like, modern music, um, and... Minor usually sounds sad, and major usually sounds happy. There are exceptions, but that's, like, your really basic thing, and they're just like, uh... Okay, they're actually the same, just, uh, with a different root. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't want to get into explaining modes and all that, though. Yeah. But the main thing is if you're, like, playing it on an instrument, it's, uh, like, your scale pattern, like, and, um... The, like, when you're transposing it like that, it's that three notes, the third, the sixth, and the seventh are going to be different. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, it's just uh, different types of keys. Okay. I think I'm doing a bad job of explaining <laughs> No, I think I get it. I got the overview, at least. So, which version do you like better? I think the major key, but, like, with this song in particular, I have a kind of a difficult time telling, because they sound close enough to yeah. each other <laughs> yeah they definitely sound close enough um one note that i had is the like dripping sound at the beginning of the oh, YouTube yeah. video yeah because they copied the video i hated it i think that's in the original video yeah i don't like it it's terrible like it just it's one of those sounds that i'm just like oh stop um, but the rest of it was good, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like one of those little noises that just, like, drives me insane. Um, but the rest of it I thought was good, and it, it was funny, because I was like, this is a good version, and, um, I liked it because it was only the sound, that sounds silly, but it was only the sound that sounded different. Um, yeah, But you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, it was very similar to the regular, or the, I guess, original one. Yeah, which some of the other ones of these do sound a lot different. Yeah. Like, there's um a few Red Hot Chili Pepper songs like this, some other popular songs. Um, My favorites are probably this, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and one of the uh, Star Wars uh pieces, like uh, film pieces. Very cool. Yeah. yeah I think it's, it's neat to hear songs in different uh, modes like that. And uh, in this version in particular, uh, this song, this version of this song, uh, I like the mandolin solo, like in the bridge. I like how that sounds in major, I think, better than how it sounds in minor. That's cool. It's a very interesting sound. Yeah, very cool. So when you say, like, you know, this was like a YouTube thing, did the band record no, it in no, major no, no, or no. somebody else Someone did else, that? like, yeah, someone else, like, so this was originally done in minor. Um, somebody else, like, I, I assume they use some sort of program where they just, like, transpose those individual notes. I don't know, like, how you would go about doing that. 
Interesting. Okay, okay. I mean, I know if you were, like, uh, like, performing it, how you would go about doing that, that's actually not that hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I thought it was good. I really enjoyed it. And, I, of course, I like the original as well. Yeah. Next. Okay, next, um, It's My Life by No Doubt. This was from the album The Singles, released in 2003, and it actually won a Grammy for Best Remix Recording Non-Classical, hmm. um, which I had no idea. So um, the original was um, released in 1984 by Talk Talk, which was an English New Wave band. Yeah, I definitely tell this was New Wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was in that was released in 1984, and then No Doubt remade it. And um, yeah, I like this version of the song. I think it's a good. You know, I love No Doubt. So No, no Doubt is always it's like nostalgic to me. It's just fun. I've seen No Doubt in concert, and the energy has been, like, unmatched from any other band I've seen in concert. So much fun, especially at, like, an outdoor venue. Uh, that might have also been at the Vans Warp Tour or, like, oh, Voodoo yeah, Fest or something yeah. in New Orleans. But um, I just think No Doubt's awesome, so I really like this version of the song. Yeah. I didn't know the original, so I had to go look that up. <laughs> yeah, I had to do the same. Like, I feel like I heard it maybe at some point, like, but, um, like, maybe on a movie or something. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. it kind of had that, like, or maybe I'm just thinking of the No Doubt version, like, when I was <laughs> listening to it. So, um, so I don't know if I actually have heard it, but I did have to look it up myself as well. Yeah, uh, this sounds like a fairly faithful cover from, like, listening to the original. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more toned down, but, like, still pretty faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think Gwen Stefani does a good job in this genre, but I don't like this genre, so. You don't? Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I think her vocals are good for it, but. Yeah. Never liked the 80s sound. Yeah, you know, I'm, I think I've said on this podcast, I don't usually like 80s music, so. Yeah, yeah. And I like 80s music, so I was yeah. digging it. But, yeah. All right, any other notes on that one? No. Okay, next. So, my last one, Lazy Eye Demo by Silver Sun Pickups, which is uh, purportedly from a self-titled demo EP from 2004, but I can't find much info about it online, but that's apparently where it's from. Uh, the original version is from Silver Sun Pickups' 2006 album, Carnivas, though technically this version has more claim to being the original because it's a demo. <laughs> that's right. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I was reading the comments. Um, on the YouTube video that I watched, and they were kind of, you know, to that tune that this was actually the demo, um, and it was like a, a slower version yes, yes. of the song that was actually released, um, which I thought was very interesting, but... Yeah, have you heard the original? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I meant to go back and listen to it after I listened to this, and I totally just didn't. I forgot about it. I thought you might have known it already, but I guess not. I think I do know it. Like, like when I was listening to the song, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds familiar. Like, I'm pretty sure I know the original song, but I couldn't be positive. So I wanted to go back and listen to the original, but I did not. But I think I have heard the original before. Okay, yeah. it's It was popular in, like, alternative rock um, at the time, so. Yeah, I mean, like, the lyrics sounded familiar, so I'm pretty sure I've heard it. Uh, but I, you know, I'm terrible at, like, remembering song names and like different stuff like that so i do want to go back and listen to the original and see if in fact i was remembering correctly but i liked this version of it um i thought it was good it's pretty long yes, um but yeah. i thought it was i think it's like seven minutes and 28 seconds or something like that yeah i mean the original song's like six minutes long so <laughs> yeah yeah i was just like that's a long song but it's really easy to listen to like some songs that are that long i'm like getting tired of by that time you know what i mean oh, okay, but this one yeah. i thought you know like i didn't have a problem getting through it i thought it was good what did you think about it yeah so um uh... By the way, second time Silver Sun Pickups has uh, appeared yes. on our mixtapes. Um, Noted. Yeah, Yeah, I like this version. Um, I picked it because it's a demo. I thought that'd be interesting to have a demo on here as an alternate version. Yes. Um, and, but, like, 
you know, like most demos, uh, I like this version, but I think the release version's better. It's just, like, more polished and, I think, better overall. Like, this version's slower, and it has some, like, um, I guess arrangement changes is what you'd call them. Yeah. Uh, I do like the uh, ending. There's more noise. I like the, like, noisy ending there. <laughs> I was going to say, this was also, like, the ending where I was actually you know got the cat's feedback as well oh, okay yes. um, <laughs> like the ears back i was like dude you're you know you're not really uh well, cats don't this like song. that kind of stuff yeah no they don't but i thought i liked it i thought it was good but when i was reading the comments it was very divided like some people were like no i like the the one that was released way better and other people were like no no this demo version's way better so i thought that was interesting yeah, it's an interesting version. I do like, uh, you know, I, like I said, I like listening to demos and hearing how they sound compared to the original. Yeah, I think it's interesting how the artists and the producers, like, make the decisions on, like, how to change up a song or, you know, which songs get released and which ones don't, which songs are set to be singles and which ones aren't. Mm -hmm. Like, I always just think that's a very interesting part of the industry. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, next. Next, and my last song is The Man Who Sold the World by Nirvana. Yet another famous cover. Yes. And this was from the album In Utero. Oh, that was on the album? Yes. Or is that like the deluxe? Um, I think it says it was the third and final studio album by Nirvana. And it was released on September 21st, 1993. Yeah, I didn't think that song came from that album. Yeah, I have just seen like um like videos of like the li like live performance. Yeah, I think this was um from the unplugged. Yes. So, yeah, I was I I don't know. I need to look more into that, which I did not do. I should have, but um but I don't know. Yeah, it's just Yeah, this is from unplugged. Utero. So, they only did it live. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, which I thought was also interesting. So, this was The Man Who Sold the World was a song originally by um, David Bowie. Yep. And was also on his third album, and it was released in 1970 in the U.S. and in 1971 in the U.K. So that, you know, 23 years later is when Nirvana did a cover, and I thought it was really good. What did you think? Yeah, it's fine. It's um, fine. It's like a stripped-down version. I mean, it's from MTV Unplugged, so... Right, yeah. And once again, very famous. Like, if you look up, like, lists of best covers, this is one that'll appear on it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I think I like the original better. Yeah. I like them both, to be yeah. honest. You know, I always like Nirvana, and I just think it's it was a great, like, live recording of it um i thought it was really good just to hear that kind of more grungy you know sound yeah, than yeah. the original and i always like me some 90s grunge so i thought that was good but the original by david bowie was good too so i like them both yeah it was one of the few classic rock songs i like so yeah i'm not a huge fan of classic rock yeah and I felt the same way. I was like, yeah, this is one that I can actually, like, listen to and not cringe, so. <laughs> yeah, that, um, the intro riff and, like, it plays throughout, that's, like, a really good, uh, like, thing. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, classic song, so. Yeah, it's, I think it's, that was a good, um, example. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Well, yeah, um. So, the uh, question I always ask on these at the end is, how does this work as a mixtape, do you think? Ooh, as a mixtape? I think it was good. Um, you'd have to put it in the right order, okay? Where you go from, I, this is what I would do. I would go from, like, the kind of um, more alternative, ooh, maybe you start off with grunge, get into the alternative go into the, like, alt-pop, like, I-L-Y, and then get into those R&B sounding songs. Oh, hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna say, mine's all different, like, rock stuff that you probably, like, like, can put together. Yeah. And then, like, uh, two of yours are rock, one's, uh, like, new wave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and two are more modern pop stuff, so. Yeah. You could do it, though. 
I could set it up in a way where it flows and you'd be like, oh, DJ, <laughs> DJ Jin in the house. Yeah, so you think this one works well together? I do, yes. Yeah, I think that's been, you know, some of our mixtapes don't always <laughs> work the best. <laughs> no, they're like way off. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I like the topic. Yeah. You know, it's neat hearing different versions of songs. You know, technically, if you want to, this is like 21 songs. <laughs> <laughs> it is, honestly. Or wait, no, just 20, because one of them is the same one. Just 20. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's two originals for Numb Encore. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it evens out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, so some neat picks, you know. Uh, I think we picked some really popular ones, too. Yes. Two covers of Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Um. Two very famous covers, one like famous mashup of two other famous songs, so <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and Losing My Religion's a popular song too. It's just a weird thing. That's real it. popular. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. I like them. I think they're all notable, like and they're all good, so I can't say there was any that I did not like oh, yeah. at all. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you always can. Yeah, I mean it's it's le- it's more I don't like the genres, nothing against the songs in particular. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, I'll take us out. All right. That's been Beach View. Hope you enjoyed listening and tune in next time. Bye. Bye.